I have a my, my thing about downtown um, is if you look at bigger cities, mm-hmm. okay, and you look at bigger cities, and let's downtown is is north, so you have bigger cities when one side of the city is growing, like the south of Colleen is growing, and everybody's going south, everybody's thinking south. What happens later is after we move so far south, then you have people with money who come back into the north. Mm-hmm. And they start buying the, buying the area at a higher price and they exited people out of their own homes because they in turn go back to rebuild downtown because they've gone as far as south as they can. They're going to come back north, rebuild it. Those who are who can't afford to move anywhere else are going to be slowly kicked out of their own areas because it's going to be a ground that I can now go by. That happens in big cities mm-hmm. all yes. the time. Mm-hmm. In big cities, it, it happens. And what I see in Colleen is it happening in Colleen because downtown, downtown is like, what well, I'm going down there for? If I have a business downtown, I, it's not going to be any good. I, you know, unless like I'm a restaurant, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do all right. But if I'm not a restaurant, if I'm downtown, there's nothing for you to do on weekends on down, downtown area. There's no reason for you to go. Um, when they created the downtown Com- revitalization committee mm-hmm. my suggestion is that they take gray street and make it no more no longer street but create it as a as a place where like a cafe style you know where different cafe you have a big street it's all blocked off at the end down at the end of gray they can have a big circle where every other weekend it could be an ethnic festival you know mm-hmm. where every ethnicity will come and you know set up and and have a, a a walk away a walk around area where you can sample this food sample that food sample entertainment because we're a multiculturally cultural diverse city and to me that would have been a nice thing so that when they started the revitalization committee i was on it but i walked away when i realized what that it was just politics as usual. yes, yes it was yes. <laughs> and, and 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 like you say we are getting together with the committee yeah we do not need the council to approve this because evidently they do not want Right. The participation of the citizens, and to me, like I told them, we have got to hear the voices of the constituents, the business people downtown. As of now, I'm setting up a meeting next week with some of the business people that want to get involved. And Louis Minor will chair that, and uh, Council, Council Member Harris and I, hopefully Mr. Johnson will join us as just on the side assisting mm-hmm. downtown. We have a lot of good ideas. Mr. Minor is a contractor. He knows all the ideas. He has fantastic ideas for downtown. So more to come. So just keep tuned because we will surprise you. We will work on downtown. We have some great business people that are going to join us. And now that's all I have to say on that right now until someone asks a question. Okay. All right. Okay. Steve. Now, I will say uh, in regards to the, the, the water and sewage, we talked about that committee. Um, I, I will say in regards to that, that um, on September 13th, um, September 13th, that's a Thursday of, of, of this year, um, I'll be holding a, a forum uh, for people to be come, they, they able to come out and talk to the uh, public works director. And so you can come out there September 13th. Now, the uh, location, is, that's still pending. But once I get the location secured, then I will put that on. I will put that on my Facebook page. That's in the loop with City Councilman Steve Harris. Um, say that again, your Facebook okay, page. All right. Facebook page. I talk fast sometimes. I know I do. Yes, you do. <laughs> okay. The Facebook page is in the loop with District 4 City Councilman Steve Harris. That's on Facebook. So you can go there and you can look for it on there. Also, uh, since I'm a member of different groups around the city, especially around District 4 for the most part, uh, but also around the city in general, I'm going to be posting that out there and um, sharing it in different groups. So um, everybody try to uh, keep your keep your head up and eyes open on, on that particular location. Once again, it'll be September 13th. And the uh, director of public works will be there to answer questions. And um, like I said, location location pending. I'm looking forward to seeing you there because that is a very important issue. Even with the standing committee, uh, I think a standing committee would be valuable in looking yes. at that. But it's based on a pre-existing law or a case law, rather, how the city operates. And if you don't know about it, uh, just like I said, just give give me a call. Give Council Councilman Shirley Fleming a call. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, message us on Facebook, however you want to do it, con- contact us, and we'll let you know about it. But it's based on an 1862 case law, 1862. And so um, that we're, we're going to address. But, Wait, 1862? Uh, 1862. Yes. Yes. It, isn't this like 2018? 2000, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but and, 18, and we're dealing with something on 1862? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, the as, city. As, as someone told me, it was it's an oldie but goodie. Yeah, the city. <laughs> the, we thought we thought that the city had an ordinance on this. I also chaired that water and sewage, which was cut out. I was the chair of that. They blocked that as well. So, like, I'm so glad Mr. Harris is doing this. I really appreciate him. That is awesome. Very positive. We will be there with Mr. Huggins. A lot of the seniors have had problems with their sewage. They paid so much money. And we didn't even realize that on my property, below that belongs to the city, which that they said it's my property, but it's, it's supposed to be the city's property. So that's another issue we're going to work on, too. I'm not going to go into depth on that, but Mr. Harris and, and is going to bring that out at his meeting. So we need everybody to show up so that they can get the information I, on that. Uh, okay, I have, a, I have a, a question, and I'm going to answer my own question in a way, but I need you all to hear, hear it. A couple of weeks ago, I was looking at city council meeting, and uh, Melissa Brown was uh, going to speak. Shirley Fleming had invited her. She was going to speak. And the mayor let her know that, you know, she needed to sit down or he was going to have her removed. Uh, the city attorney, I mean, the city judge, uh, illegally, illegally, and I'm going to say how I know it's illegal, illegally uh, set for a, a police officer to arrest her. And she was arrested. The problem is he didn't have a warrant and this was in his court. I contacted the state NAACP and the national NAACP's legal team to find out that as a judge, he had no rights to do what he did uh, at all. He had no rights to, to do that because he didn't have a warrant and the police officer cannot arrest you if he doesn't see you commit a crime or offense based on not having a warrant. So there was no warrant out for her. He had, the judge didn't offer a warrant uh, for her arrest and she was arrested. My thing is this, it, my problem was I have seven city council people, I have a, I have a mayor and a city manager that didn't do anything. The mayor was in control. He could have stopped it. City, the, the city council is also in control and didn't stop it. What happened was everybody was shocked, because I don't know what, to see what would happen yes. and didn't know what yes. to do. Yes. So what I did was I kind of, for and I didn't do it for, for Melissa. I did it to find out can a city judge interject his power in a city council meeting to find out no he can't so i got an issue with with that i'll, I'll say this i mean because when you said when you said um in, in the end when nobody said anything it, it, it was shock that was complete shock but even but even as everything was going back and forth and, I, and i'll say this one one reason because as as things were going because the city council does have the authority to allow somebody to speak publicly, even if it's not a public hearing. We, 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 we do have that authority to do that. And that's why you make a request and the city council says yes or no, and they can, they can speak on something. You don't have to wait for a public hearing because for the most part, there may never be a public hearing over this particular topic. And so, um, so it, as the argument ensued, and even as you see, like you said, as, as far as the head on the city council, when you it gets to a time when you see the a majority of the council siding with if you want to say something that's wrong that's being done wrong then there's only so much you can do at that point in time aside from just creating a huge giant you know and then I mean, at the same time the mayor um if he just if he decided to he can have a council member removed i mean yes. if he decided that you were miss that you were mm -hmm. that you were um uh you know just just interrupting the meeting or whatever he can have a council member move so okay. it comes to one of those times where at that point you kind of sit back and you choose your battles and that's why uh coming up on this tuesday uh the mayor will be on the agenda for a special item for a, a special agenda item and i put that on there to talk about the conduct of the mayor and right. Right. i am requesting that we give the mayor a verbal um or public reprimand or warning regarding his conduct because it hasn't been professional. It hasn't been according to protocol. True. And even so, even as uh, me and Councilwoman Fleming were talking about, uh, there's some guidelines in the, in the protocol and the, and the charter that says if a mayor uh, engages in, 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 a, in a conversation to a certain extent, I got to go back and look at it, that he, he, he's not allowed to conduct the meeting anymore because he's become part of the, the meeting. argument. And so with that right there, I have to go back and look at that you know, closely make sure I have all my ducks in a row when I present my statement this Tuesday, but 
Um, I'm going to invite citizens who who saw what happened a few weeks ago. You know, if you, you can go online, you know, at the you know, Killeen, Texas, uh, you know, City of Killeen website, and you know, click on, you know, find the video section and go back and look at it uh, if you want to. If you want to be, be brought to speed on that, but um, I'm going I'm I'm to request to allow citizens, some citizens, to be able to speak on not just the conduct of the mayor, but the conduct of the council if they want to, because we're, we we belong to y'all. Right. We, yes. we, we yeah. work for y'all. You you are our constituents. And mm -hmm. I know also that, you know, one of the council members said, <laughs> as Fleming said, she, she said, one, one of the council members uh, said last week that, that, that she was no longer going to call uh, the people constituents. And I'm not, I don't know what they are after that. I mean, because if I'm not your constituent, then what am I? Who said that? Debbie Nash. We're not constituents. He says, I will no longer call these people constituents. Wait, wait, what are these people? I don't know, but she says, I do not like the word constituents. And I continuously use that word because I do understand what a constituent mm -hmm. is. Yes. And okay. I always use that term, so I don't know why that came out of her mouth to say that, but I guess she had her reasons. And getting back to what you talked about uh, in that meeting, like Mr. Harris said, it was totally a shock. I was, I turned around and I said, Mr. Mayor, do something. Because to me, it had gotten out of hand. And I wanted him to say, move her off the property, but do not arrest her. I don't feel like that she should have been arrested. I don't feel like she should have been in handcuffs. Now that's my personal opinion. And after I think about it, if that ever happens to a constituent again, I will intervene. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. I will intervene for my personal because I don't feel, if I was in her place, as small as that lady is, where was she going to go with handcuffs? With it? They didn't have to put handcuffs True, on her. True, because I'm taller than Melissa. Yeah, really I mean, she's a little <laughs> tiny thing. She's like a kid, really. Yes, I did tell Melissa she was wrong. When the mayor yes. told her no, Melissa should have stopped right then. And I would say today, tomorrow, and next week, Melissa was wrong, and I would say that she mm -hmm. should have stopped then. But after she didn't, she should have been escorted by, and, and the mayor should have intervened, even with the judge. Now that Miss Jones said that he was, it was inappropriate for him to interfere in the mayor's meeting. Mm -hmm. But I did ask the mayor do something. Now the problem, the problem, the problem was actually this because it was actually, if you will, uh, I guess in essence caused by the mayor because he decided that he didn't want to hear her speak. So no, you can't speak. And so the city council was never given the opportunity, the full city council was never given the opportunity to say yes or no. Now you had people on the, you had uh, Kilpatrick on the council who who, who yelled out, you know, uh, I'll leave out the first word he yelled out. It was, no. Know, H, huh? Well, he said no, but the word before that, you know. You, oh, the other word. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. word you put before no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, yeah. We, we got you. I mean, I mean, you know, the H-E double hockey stick no. But I mean, but he yelled that out. And so, um, but as far as it, I mean, but when it comes to that, that right there is you have other council members who are violating the protocol as well. Mm -hmm. And when things like that happen, then um, things, things get out of hand because the mayor, like he did with the first, like he did when she requested Mr. Huggins come up and speak, mm -hmm. um, the council approved, uh, you know, said, yes, we'll let him come up and speak. But when to. Melissa, when she wanted mm -hmm. Melissa to come up and speak, he just said no. Mm -hmm. And so that is an overreach of, of that authority right there. But if you have the council, majority of the council allowing it to happen, then there's nothing at that moment that you can do about it. So my question is this, if the council gets out of control and the mayor's out of control, who steps in? Uh, I think that Ms. Davis as the attorney should take more lead as the attorney because she is our city attorney and she's sitting there every week. And I think a lot of times she needs to intervene when she doesn't. So, because we need to, all right, because as, as, as looking at it on the outside, right? And, and, and I'm going to say it just straight out. We work with special needs kids, me and Amber. That looked like special needs kids was running the city council at that time, doing whatever the heck they wanted to do. <laughs> Nobody was going to say nothing to me because if you did, I was going to have a temper tantrum. Mm -hmm. So it looked like a big, huge temper tantrum. You, you know, exactly of, of some was. little children exactly having a temper tantrum mm -hmm. and all at the same time. We can't have a mayor that does that. We, we can't and we can't have a council that allows it mm -hmm. somebody got to be held accountable for it because when it happens once it happens again it happens again it, all, it happens quite a bit and so you know we we can't have that amber um well and i'll you're just too, listening <laughs> yes i'm listening because i'm learning yeah. i'm learning a lot um uh, i would say too once you get that level of participation from the community 
they want to know that the protocols and procedures are going to be honored and they're going to be followed and, and that they're just going to be fairness because if not um people are going to opt not to participate if they feel like um there there's not equality in the process but one of my questions was um as far as knowing who your uh, council members are i don't think the average um person my age knows who their council member is um knows like the basic contact information could those items be maybe posted to kiss a facebook page uh, yes mm, I can do maybe that. so we could see okay where mm -hmm. do where if i live here who is my council member um and as far as like those uh, meetings that are coming up uh, the times and the locations posted there so that because I personally don't have cable I don't see the need for it I'm pretty much either on my phone or I'm very busy mm -hmm. so I'm on the internet so different forums uh, where people can find the information that they need besides newspapers or traditional cable what you know news stations everyone might not um, use that outlet so um, I would definitely want to become involved, but I've learned so much just being here and listening to um, all of you, and um, I'm I'm hopeful. I would definitely stay in touch with you, Amber, and I'm very glad that you came on the show because, like you say, you don't have cable. So many of us don't have cables, mm -hmm. especially the seniors. And we had talked to Miss Shine about some other ways, meaning to notify a lot of people that don't have cable so that's something <clears throat> excuse me that's another issue that we need to work on as well and there's a lot of things that we can do just as constituents if, if you get the paper do you get the paper uh no i don't well see you actually i've cut yourself off on media and stuff like that because it's no way i mean as much as that young man's been the paper and myself and Wade Phyllis does. I know it's kind of hard for you to keep up with all of us. A lot of young children your age, a lot of times they don't they don't read the paper, they don't listen to the news, and that's where they lose out. Now I do. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do watch the news. I'm an avid news watcher. Thanks to my grandmother, she kept us watching the news. But um, the local news kind of discouraged me. It was a lot of who's been arrested, mm -hmm. um, not a lot of what's going on per se in the community as far as events. Um, you know, here and there you would see like an event, you know, clip of but not really as far as city government, you know, what meetings you can attend and things like that. To me, that's more beneficial news. So I tend to lean towards the national news or um, in internet news and things like that. So I guess having multiple forums because I'm really busy and so I don't watch a lot of TV anyway. You know, so. I'm gonna say I'm a, I'm I'm a uh, say this, and the city itself cleans guilty of it. We're supposed to follow modern technology. Um, as educators, we follow modern technology whether we like it or not. Radio, you follow it whether you like it or not. Uh, it's, it's not a, um, a cutoff thing. The newspaper, I get the newspaper every day. Do I have time to read it every day? Nope. And I really don't care that I don't have time to read it every day. <laughs> I really don't because mm -hmm. I, I get informed either way, one or the other. But we can't. But we can't say you don't get the paper. Up uh, to bed. You don't have regular right. TV. Oh, to it. we can't say that because we live in a we live in a in a, in a time world. now yeah. where there mm -hmm. is Facebook, Instagram, um, uh, what is it? Um, what's the other? Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> but but what I mean is no. Our city council should somebody in our city council who hire who does press publicity and all that mm -hmm. should be in all those areas. Yeah, you know, like mm -hmm. I know now now because at ten thirty at night at ten thirty at night I can go to Facebook and go to Clean Daily Herald and read most of the paper. People need to know that you can go at ten thirty at mm -hmm. night, go to Facebook, okay. Clean Daily Herald. You can read some of the paper. But what our city city and I'm not saying the city council, but our whoever does press, she needs to stop <laughs> just limiting to, to television. In the newspaper, and she needs to reach out to the technology that the kids and the youth and young people are using, whether she likes it or not. It's not a like you or not thing. 
they need to do that. So like Amber should be able to go on the city face, link on City's Facebook and page. You guys should have a a, a place within the city link that I could access you. I should be able to put in my address and know exactly yeah. who my yeah. city council yeah. member yeah. is yeah. and yeah. have a link to your mm -hmm. Facebook or a link to your social feeds mm -hmm. instead of me hunting everywhere. And you yeah. may can put up your surveys if you have concerns about certain projects, mm -hmm. link your surveys mm -hmm. to those pages so that we could have immediate input. Yeah. Um, and you have um, a section where would you like to contribute to this committee or participate on this committee? Mm -hmm. So that people who do want to can have that access. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be so aloof. The, the the resources and you know it shouldn't be that difficult in this day and age. Mm -hmm. It almost seems intentional, and I don't. I, and that's my perception, but it can't be mine alone. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's true. That's a very good point you brought up, young lady, and I think. All of us together, we're going to work on this. And you brought about a very positive point, and you too, Phyllis. Mm -hmm. And I think Mr. Harris and I understand exactly what you're talking about. Miss Shine, I think, puts out, she has a Facebook page, mm -hmm. and she's about to put the uh, animal shelter on her Facebook page as well. So I think each one of us council members mm -hmm. can go talk to her, and I can put out there what I'm doing and who mm -hmm. wants to join me. So I will make an effort mm -hmm. next week to meet with Miss Shine. And Amber, thank you for bringing that to my attention because we're not perfect. Yes. I make a lot of mistakes and I do try to, yes, I'm one person. And as they say, quote, part time, but I do work more than that. And it <laughs> takes a lot of effort because I do have my personal life. I, sometimes you I don't even get to shop. Wait, you have a one? Ah, yeah, there what? you go, young lady, you, you personal do what? life. What? What's I that? do have to go shopping, I do go to church. <laughs> And I'm involved in so many other organizations as well. And I think sometimes, you know, we get kind of, you know, involved in too much. And I hate to say too much, but I'm going to keep trying it because I love my constituents. Say that again, my constituents. <laughs> and so thank you so much for bringing that to light, darling. We will Steve, work on that. I'll say, you know, you brought some good points as well. You know, and even some that, you know, that my mind, a little light bulb kind of came on when you said it. Mm -hmm. But now I know one thing, though, the city is, because even with our new city manager, one thing I, I can say that he, that he um, insisted on doing was trying to make the meetings more accessible to people. Mm -hmm. And so if you have Internet and so forth, we have the live streaming now that you can right. that, that you yeah. can do. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, we have that. And we also have, um, of course, the. The city council meetings are posted on the city website, but you can find them on YouTube as well. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we've even sat in professional developments at, on, on our campus where um, they had links that we could actually chime in with questions as That's things are idea. being presented. Yeah. That's and so idea. maybe logistically, I don't have transportation to get to, or I don't have the, t I don't have the time to physically make it to the meeting, but maybe I can chime in asking a question and just project it. So that, I mean, that, you that, know, that, yeah. technology, we have it. We need to use it yeah, I mean, that's, efficiently. That's, that's, no, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's, that's, a, that's a very good, good idea. Yes. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because the way it works sometimes is you'll, you'll have some council members who could say, well, I talked to my constituents and they said this and they have, no, they have no proof. They, they have no proof. They talk to that. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then uh, you have some of the council members who come in and say, well, you know, I'm reading right here from my from my Facebook account. These are questions people were asking me Absolutely. or telling me about it. And so um, I think, you know, like I said, I think that would that would be oh, that's great. That would be that would yes. I mean, that would be an interesting mm -hmm. you know, thing to do is to have is to have um, a call live, in live yes, questions. Live now, of course, um, like I said, of course, every question won't be won't, won't right, be asked right, and so right, forth. Right, but right. if if, you, and if if we if we're in the middle of a, of a discussion and somebody's talking and the question comes in, then we're like, okay, that's a good question. I mean, go ahead and try to note and ask this question. And it, but my only fear of that is this: my only fear of it is when you when we get to those times where um, some council members are tired of hearing about something, or some council members are feeling like, okay, we're getting backed into a corner, mm -hmm. they will quickly. Make a Raise motion and make a motion, motion to end it. To, to, to end it, and and that's that's what that's that's been one of the strategies that has been used when there was a discussion that did, that didn't want to be heard because <clears throat> I know it was kind of controversial for some, but the solid the, the solid waste outsourcing. When we had when we had the uh, the discussions about solid waste outsourcing, 
we had we you know we had some um, some, some briefings on it and so forth from the, you know during workshops. But when it actually came down for legitimate discussion, then we didn't even go. And the staff said we spent like sixty-eight hours putting this proposal together and so forth. And guess how long we had, uh, if I remember correctly, guess how long we had about to actually try to try to discuss it? Less than thirty minutes, because somebody came up and and mm -hmm. what, I remember this because Councilman Johnson asked a question and and, and I, I I seconded seconded that question and she agreed as well. We want to hear from the bidders, the people who bid on this, because y'all are telling this one thing, but they're saying, no, no, this ain't right. This isn't right. Mm -hmm. And then the way the RFP was done, I thought, I mean, in myself, and I'll say it, you know, because my, my loyalty is to the citizens, you know, not, not the city per se, but the citizens of the city, because the citizens are the city. That's where my loyalty is. Like I think about KISD and their the, the attorneys for KISD, their loyalty is to KISD, not the teacher. If you happen to be a good part of their defense or whatever, they'll, they'll, they'll help you. But if not, you're on your own. So my thing is for the citizens, the citizens are the city. But either way, like I said, I mean, when, when you have something like that, when, when you have something like that, you have to be able to allow for full discussion. Because when we asked to hear from the bidders, I remember like it was yesterday, the mayor held up the RFP and said, well, you did hear from him. It's right here. He waved him, he waved him in front of us. Well, you did hear from him right here. No, we want to hear from them directly. We want to have them come and explain what they have to offer and their numbers and so forth. So we can get all the information we need because apparently they're not agreeing with what you're saying. And I think having more community input from the constituents would give you the backing that you need for the, for the time that you need to present certain um, issues because you can say, look, I have this um, survey and, uh, you know, 500 of my constituents re re replied that this was an area of concern. And, and so having that, it gives you leverage. And there are people who do want to participate, but it has to be accessible and it has to be something that's doable and empowering. And, and, and part of that, like I said, is having that information out where people can can feel like I can contribute even if it's just my opinion mm -hmm. that my opinion has leverage you know so so I have a qu I have a question for you too and then uh, access can be my wrap up question okay. Woo. city council meetings your agenda can the agenda be posted in the public libraries yes it should be posted can, anywhere that can, so citizens it can be all around it should be posted everywhere even so it outside can be. Yes, even outside on the doors when the when the city uh, hall is closed, because I requested that. But I mean, like in the, like like for it Amber in the, yes, in the community, in the community, and if not, and if not, should be able to be posted. Okay. And if not, Mr. Harris and I will talk to Ms. Shine about okay. this, because right. she's very cooperative about okay. wanting to put out the information, like Amber said, even in the schools, everywhere that there's people, right? Okay. Anywhere the church is, anywhere right. that there's okay. people. So we will make sure that this gets out, Amber, one of your concerns. That's that's a small concern. So we'll work on that, darling. Okay. okay. And I want to thank you. Okay. So I want to thank you all for coming on the show this You're morning. You're welcome, Ms. I think we had a very good talk, yes. very good conversation. Uh, and that's what the show is about. Because if we can't teach, if we can't teach and we can't learn, then we don't need to exist. Uh, I know it's kind of tough, but anyway. Make sure you vote. Yeah, remember Make I sure said. you register first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, and, and I will say this last thing. Now, when you talk about, when you, if you ask yourself the question, how do people keep getting back into office if they keep doing all these things that aren't good for the city? It's because you they voted. Have, well, they one, one, they have a voting block. They have people who just vote for them. But no matter what, you know, they just vote for them. But the only way, because I'll, I mean, tell you what, because because uh, Councilwoman Fleming is one of my heroes. Because I'm gonna tell you what she did. She went when she first got on the council. She went against a candidate. Oh, okay, I got one minute. <laughs> but anyway, but I'm telling you what she did. She did the grassroots thing, and she overcame the block vote. And she got on that council, and everybody was shocked and surprised. 
And, you know, since she's been on, she's been doing some great things. So yeah. that's what we need more. We need those grassroots voters. Go ahead, Phyllis. Thank you, sir. I, I'm going to get Steve. Thank I'm, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank everybody for listening to Kiss Community Connections uh, this morning. And uh, we had a great time. And we will all come back again uh, and, and Thanks, talk about what we did and where we've gone. But I want you to always remember, you cannot lead a positive life with a negative mind. We'll talk to you next Sunday. Bye now.